Welcome to this session on standards and specification. This is uh, session 12. This is the second part. And the name of the subject is fashion material and production management for merchandisers. Now, there are uh, different types of standards. Some of them uh, have been discussed in this uh, session. Now, we have We have company standards, we have industry standards, we have voluntary standards, and we have mandatory standards. Now, we want to look at them one by one. Now, what are company standards? It is used within the company, not used by the entire industry. Something that you, you know, some standard that you develop within your own organization. And, you know, it has been doing pretty well for you. Uh, and, and you know, these standards can be used in product development or production or sourcing or quality assurance. And uh, the company standards, they describe general characteristics or features of product or service or describe the required level of performance. And it, it includes material characteristics, fit, uh, production method, etc. So, if you look at the examples, uh, it would be fairly clearer. So, uh, Paul Smith is a designer and uh, it has its company standard that you know every uh, in every shirt that they make the second last button hole the button hole is made using a red color stitching thread same for the second last eyelet in the shoes uh, made by Paul Smith so that is its own standard we have our own standard we follow these particular standards which is which has been invented by us, let's say, or which has been developed by us. So, let's look at the example. Reebok says, you know, we, all our t-shirts, we use reinforcing tapes at the shoulder seat. It is our own inbuilt standard. It helps to maintain the shoulder length and the shape much better. That is, a company standard followed by only Reebok. All complaints to be resolved within three working days. Now, the government hasn't said this. The industry is not doing this. But LG, an electronic company, they say, you know, we follow a standard in our organization. All complaints have to be resolved within three working days. Shopperstop was the first company in India, retail company, fashion retail company, which came up with this policy, return policy, no questions asked. It said, if you don't like something, you can return it to us within 15 days. And no questions asked. No one is going to ask you any questions. That is a company standard. If you look at the industry standards, it reflects consensus I mean, it is such a standard which is used in, by the entire industry. So it, it reflects consensus of the entire industry, the players in the industry. Industry standards are in terms of material specification. Like we say, 40 is poplin, 60 is cambric, 80 is voile, or we have polyester georgettes or chiffons. So we call them a certain name. That is an industry standard. Let's say um, corduroys. They come in 16 waves, 12 waves. So the entire industry either makes 12 waves or 16 waves. Entire industry makes uh, 6 ounce, 6 and a half ounce, 8 ounce denim, 9 ounce denim, 10 ounce denim. So, and the denim industry sells denim not by GSM but by ounce. So they say this is 9 ounce denim. They don't say GSM. That's the industry standard that has been developed uh, for various kinds of materials. Now, there are many standards which exist for material forms. Anything which can be used for certain number of washes or something which can withstand at least 350 cycles of abrasion. So, there are different, uh, there are so many standards which exist for material performance. Now, when you talk about uh, mobile phones, all the mobile phones today have Gorilla Glass. So you don't even have to have, uh, uh, let's say, a screen guard. All the laptops have the same kind of USB slots. You may have additional USB slots of, of, of different type, type C uh, for that matter, uh, in case of uh, 
uh, one of of uh, asus and uh, if you take any cell phone everyone wants to find out what pictures can it take and what is the maximum number of megapixels in which this mobile phone can click pictures if you talk about your uh, laptop first thing that people ask is what is the ram which is the speed random access memory then we have a standard in let's say example from uh, textile and clothing moisturized cotton everyone in the industry understands what is moisturized cotton it means one and the same thing wrinkle free is another industry standard all the people who are making shirts like the raymond color plus or arrow louis philippe allen solly so wrinkle free is one industry standard it does not get wrinkled so easily and easy care is where you can wash our garment using just water or maybe water and you know the cheapest of detergent you don't have to dry clean it and things like that so easy care has a particular meaning in the entire industry so that is a standard easy care is a standard now we have voluntary standards now voluntary standards may come from some company or from some community but voluntary standard is such kind of standards which are used by organizations out of their own will no one is forcing these standards the standards are uh, effective they are so good that you know companies want to follow these standards on their own without being forced by anyone so uh, we have something like an astm uh now astm is one such organization which has developed you know the various methods to test the textile materials now astm is a, is an is a private organization now companies like h&m or zara they choose astm or they choose double at double c they choose some of their methods for let's say color fastness for let's say seam strength so these are voluntary standards neither the government of any country has forced h&m to use a particular standard h&m itself found astm to be very very uh, let's say uh, practical and uh, with great accuracy so that's why they chose astm for uh, testing of a particular property of a textile material now airtel uh, they 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 took up ukla Now, Ukla is a one such website which tells you the current speed. The current uh, you go to Ukla uh, on your cell phone, and that website is going to tell you what is your current speed. What is the current speed of your cell phone? So, Airtel when they launched 4G, they used Ukla as a as a voluntary standard. It, Ukla is a third party, so they took Ukla and they showed everyone that you know if you go to Ukla, you can see uh, who is the Uh, or which uh, telecom operator is the fastest sibil is again a th- uh, private organization all the banks private banks government banks in india they follow sibil they will follow if they have to give a loan to you they will check your sibil score and all your bank accounts all the uh, sorry not your bank accounts all the loans that you have taken till date all the details are there in sibil so any bank who is about to give you a loan they will first check your civil score now the government has not forced the bank to mandatorily see the civil score of a customer the banks on their own check the civil score so that is a voluntary standard so in case of voluntary standards there is no legal force or binding behind it and it may be incorporated into laws or regulations or contracts maybe the government also starts using these voluntary standards uh, in its uh, you know in the contract that they give or the tenders that they float and things like that but voluntary standards are you know standards which have been developed by uh, by individual organizations and they are found to be so effective that companies use it without any force
and then we have mandatory standards as the word goes it is necessary by law regulations you like it or not you will have to follow it and mostly relates to safety or health issues in case of safety or health the government does not take any chance and whether a company follows its uh, company standard or whether it follows its industry standard or whether it follows any voluntary standard government is not bothered about it they will simply say that these are the mandatory standards issued by us you have to follow these standards regardless of what all other standards you have been following for example in case of uh, kids wear uh, flammability uh, is one such uh, mandatory standard any garment made for kids must pass the flammability test it should have a minimal burning behavior it should not catch fire easily so in case of uh, garments or in case of textile and clothing kids wear is one such example where there are mandatory standards related to flammability which has to be followed you don't have a choice we talked about astm as one of the uh, key organizations which has been uh, engaged in the development and uh, imparting knowledge about uh, the standards to the industry now we want to discuss uh, the astm full consensus standards which will give you a fair idea as to how uh, does uh, standards you know and the, and the different uh, uh, aspects of standards how does it help the industry now astm has developed six types of full consensus standards uh, one is test methods second is specifications third is practices fourth is terminology fifth is guides and sixth is classifications and these six types of full consensus standards they form a comprehensive uh, package a comprehensive treatment of standards in such a way that it helps the organization any organization run in a very structured format and we'll see how if you look at the test methods Uh, a definitive procedure for the identification measurement and evaluation of one or more qualities characteristics or properties of a material product system or service that produces a test result now put it uh, in, in a very simple term uh, so, so a test method let's say for example if you want to test the color fastness of a blue color cotton fabric let's say that is an example that's the case uh, that's one scenario so astm says that their test number test method number 75 so let's say astm has test method number 75 and 76 to check the color fastness of a uh, blue cotton fabric so astm has a definitive procedure for the identification measurement and evaluation of one of one or more qualities now here what quality are we uh, trying to evaluate the color fastness of blue color in the cotton fabric and uh, there is a definitive procedure there is a process used to identify that how are we going to check the color fastness of blue cotton fabric so here test method number 75 is the procedure that will be used and how do we identify that test method 75 will be used so that definitive procedure is laid down in the test method section that if something has to be tested then you go into the test method section and the procedure will be given which will help you to find out which will help you to identify that if i have to uh, find out the color fastness of blue fabric then which method should i use so when you go through this uh, definitive procedure you will get to know that test method number 75 has to be used when i want to check the color fastness of cotton blue fabric now qualities can be color fastness or characteristics is this cotton if it is cotton then it would have a particular hand feel and what is the property if you burn cotton it will smell like paper that is the property 
you know if, uh, if it is subjected to something then how does it behave that is the property characters characteristics is what is evident you see it you touch it you feel it and how does it feel so that is the characteristics now if you say material product system or service material here the, in the example the material is cotton product can be if you're if you're testing the let's say the seam strength of a garment the product will be the garment if you're looking at the system let's say you are checking the uh, speed of uh, whatsapp now, whatsapp is a software a chat uh, a chat app so that is a system and if it's a service you go to a hotel order any uh, food from the menu how much time does it take for the person to understand what you want and how much time does it take for the hotel to serve you that food and how clean is the environment what what type of music do they play and you know whether the air is fresh or not that's the service so a whether it's a material product system or service all of them can be tested for its quality for the characteristics and for the properties and test method section is what helps you to identify which method will be used to identify to measure and to evaluate the quality characteristics or properties of a material or a product or a system or a service the definitions uh, are given at the bottom characteristic means distinguishing feature of a material or uh, describe the structure shape and what is the material of a product material of a product and can be influenced by the designer in a direct manner so characteristics is the distinguishing feature of a material describe the structure shape and material so if it is iron then it will have a distinguishing feature it's very heavy and it's uh, cold when when touched uh, under normal temperature and the structure it is very very rigid and the shape can be myriad shapes uh, depending on whatever shape has been given to it and the material material as in if it is if it is iron the material of the product is iron and iron has a particular uh, let's say molecular structure to it if you look at quality quality is the level of excellence being of good worth well made or it is fit for purpose uh, if something is fit for my if it is great for me it has a great fit it is a great quality if it does not fit me or if it does not fit my situation the quality is bad just like the quality of a medicine if i have the medicine and if i get well then the quality of the medicine is good and if it if it does not cure me then the quality of the medicine is bad for me so that is a fit for purpose and when we say properties it describes the product's behavior in case it is bent in case it is heated in case it is subjected to a, to an acid how does it behave those are the properties after the test methods we look at the specification now specifications is detailing providing the details now specifications are a precise statement of a set of requirements to be satisfied by a material product system or service that indicates the procedures for determining whether each of the requirements is satisfied now you are a student you want to buy a laptop you have your specification you have a set of requirements right you want to open uh, you want to work on ms word you will be making a lot of presentation the presentation may carry audio files and video files you should be able to simultaneously operate on microsoft word and ppt and maybe excel and you might also be logged on to the internet and things like that so you need that level of uh, speed and the capability from the laptop so whatever you require you specify that i need to do these 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 things so therefore whatever laptop you provide to me it should have these capabilities so those set of capabilities are your specifications a precise statement of a set of requirements you have a set of requirements which has to be satisfied by the laptop so the material over here is, or the product over here is a laptop when you say material it can be uh, any raw material uh, like cotton or silk etc a product can be the garments or accessories a system can be uh, a system like a washing system or a dry cleaning system and if it's a service it can be a service like you know tailoring service or a designing service which indicates the procedures for determining whether each of the requirements is satisfied so a specification tells you exactly what procedure must be used for making the product 
in order to satisfy the requirement. So when you are specifying, uh, it is uh, 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 predominantly numerical requirements within reasonable limits. So you don't say that you know you want to work on MS Word. You say that I need a laptop which has a minimum RAM of certain uh, gigahertz, which means that the laptop should be able to handle that many queries or that many softwares at any given point of time. So that is the numerical requirement within reasonable limits. For garments, we say that you know I need these measurements, plus minus 1%, 2% error in terms of measurements. You want certain uh, seam strength in the garment. So it should be able to handle at least 50 kilos of weight, every seam. Or if you have a button, then you should have a certain amount of button strength. So you are giving numerical requirements within reasonable limits. It shouldn't be unreasonable. Uh, it is not possible. Uh, you won't be able to find a product which can take care of your unreasonable uh, wants and desires. Now we come to practice. Now what, what do we mean by practice? Now a definitive procedure for performing one or more specific operations or functions, that is the practice. Now, example statistical procedures or writing statements or selecting, installing and operating equipment. Now practice is how does a company behave when performing one or more specific operation or functions. Now let's say we take the example of cutting. You have to cut the fabric before we stitch the garment. So cutting is let's say a practice. Now how do we cut? Now there are many ways of cutting. You put it on the table 10 layers, 20 layers, 50 layers and then you use let's say a straight knife or a band knife or a circular knife to cut or you may use your scissors to cut. So there are various ways. Now when you are given a particular situation, how do you decide the method that you will use for cutting the fabric? So practice is a definitive procedure for performing one or more specific operations or functions. Now here the operation or the function is cutting. And what is the definite procedure that you will uh, perform? So uh, uh, for a given situation, what is the definite procedure for cutting? Now example is statistical procedures. Now let's say you will use certain statistical uh, formula to find out the find out your average performance. So let's say you are uh, doing mathematics and you are also doing um, let's say science and you are also uh, into athletics and things like that. How will you be evaluated? What procedure will be used? That is a practice. Again, writing statements on precision. How do you write statements on precision? That is again a practice. Selecting, installing and operating equipment. Now for a given situation, let's say there's just a single layer of fabric. Then I'm going to select a particular scissor because for one single layer fabric, I'm not going to use some heavy duty cutting machine. So I'm going to pick up a scissor, but if it is a very flimsy fabric or if it is a very thick fabric, single layer. I am going to select amongst the different scissors available. So selecting an equipment, installing it, there are various methods of installing also and there are various methods of operating the equipment also. So for different situations, how are we going to select the scissor, how are we going to install it and how are we going to use it. That is a part of practice. Now when this practice has been written in a book, in a, in a let's say in a booklet form. Then someone who has joined today, joined an organization, has been, given, has been given a fabric to cut. The person will go into the practice section of the booklet and see how will I be selecting the scissor, how will I be installing it and how will I operate it. So these practices will be compiled in one book or one uh, booklet, a definitive procedure for performing 
one or more specific operations or functions. So, that is a practice. Stated. Then we have terminology. Terminology, the, there are different terms that we have. So, in any book, you will see that the terms are uh, the, let us say, not so hard terms, rare terms, uh, and sometimes the common terms. Now, the book of terminology in your company, you know, the document is going to carry the definition of the terms. You know, that particular, that, that typical vocabulary that you have in a particular industry, in a particular uh, company. So, the document, uh, the terminology is a document section which comprises of definition of terms, description of the terms, and explanation of the symbols, abbreviations, and uh, acronyms. So, that book is called terminology. And every company must have this terminology book. So, uh, so that whenever a new person comes in, can go through the terminology book and understand and you know familiarize himself or herself with what does different term mean. And then you have a guide. See, you, you buy a vacuum cleaner or you buy a cell phone. With the cell phone, you will also get a guide. Now, what is that guide? It is a, again a small booklet. Now, it is a it gives you a series of options or instructions that suggest approaches, offer guidance for a procedure, increase awareness of available techniques, and provide information regarding evaluation and standardization. Now, here, when you in, in, in case of a company, this guide is a series of options or instructions that suggest what are the different approaches that can be used, and it offers guidance for a procedure. Again, you can take the example of a cutting procedure. Now, in case of, so, so we are looking at the guide and uh, you are in the cutting department. Now, this guide says that if you have to cut knitted fabric, which has a lot of stretch, which, uh, not a lot of stretch, which has a stretch more than 6%. In that case, the fabric has to be spread on the table and uh, using a uh, specific method let us say spread on the table with the help of a machine and then it has to be allowed to relax for more than 24 hours. Only then the fabric has to be cut. So, this is what the guide says. The guide can, will also say that if you have a fabric which is stable like a denim and let us say it is a 9 ounce denim, then you can have 60 to 70 layers. You do not have to you have you can uh, spread it on the table by hand you don't have to use any machine and you don't have to allow the fabric to relax you can straight away cut it you will not have any problem so this guide is telling you that if there are fabrics which are stable then how to cut if there are fabrics which are very very flimsy or fabrics which have lot of stretch then what is the manner of spreading how much time it has to be allowed to relax and then how to cut. So, that guide is a series of options or instructions that suggest approaches for cutting. It offers guidance for a you know a particular way of cutting and, and it increases awareness of available techniques and provides information regarding evaluation and standardization. How will you evaluate the quality of cutting and how do you standardize the uh, cutting uh, process. And then we have classification. A classification is fairly simple. It is something that we have been seeing since our childhood days in, uh, in, in, in chemistry, in biology, uh, in, in um, any of the subjects. Now, classification is mostly uh, systematic arrangement or division of materials or division of products or systems or services into groups based on similar characteristics such as origin, composition, properties or use. Now, let us say for example, we have natural fabrics and we have man-made fabrics. In, and, and why do we say natural or man-made? Because anything that is coming from nature is natural and what is being synthesized. So, based on the source from where are you getting the fiber, we have created this classification of natural fiber and man-made fiber. In natural, it can come from the plants, it can come from the minerals, etc., or it can come from the animals. So, all those things which come from the animals will become animal fibers, 
and anything all the all those things which are coming from the plants will be called plant fibers that is a classification method now let's say uh, that is based on origin now let's say based on composition now composition can be let's say blends now you have 100% cotton or viscose or uh, polyester or silk now those are single fiber fabrics when you say blends it has to have at least two or three fibers so it can be uh, you know poly viscose and wool or it can be uh, acrylic and wool or it can be polyester and cotton or polyester viscose or viscose and cotton so these are blends now this is the classification based on composition and then we have properties now you can have stretch fabrics now stretch fabrics so uh, stretch is a property so stretch fabrics may may be knitted or they may be uh, such fabrics which have elastane or lycra or spandex in it and because it can stretch so we call stretch fabric so all types of fabrics which have stretch in it they will they will come under stretch fabrics that is one way of classification now when we say use now uniform is a classification of garments uniforms are used when going to school or if someone is going to the uh, to the industry particular industry or when someone is going to the hospital or things like that that is based on use you call it a, a uniform uh, if you say formal wear so that is the formal use of the garments so formal wear is your shirts and trousers etc if you say night wear so the use is wearing the garment at night going to sleep so we say night wear so based on use we have done the classification night wear formal wear party wear etc etc 